Well, hello and welcome to Following on County Cricketer. I'm John Norman uh, from Talk Sport alongside uh, the Cricketer magazine's uh, Nick Friend and the returning George DeBell and two-time county championship winner Steve Harmison. Looking back at all the action from uh, the county championship and ahead to next week's uh, fair. Uh, plenty as ever uh, to get uh, our teeth stuck into. We're also going to be answering some of your questions as part of the show and uh, looking at the players that have been performing and some of those that haven't in Race to Lords. Uh, we've got uh, lots to discuss, including uh, looking at Ben Stokes' return to county cricket and Joe Root and a little bit of KP as well. So uh, thanks for joining us, whether it's on YouTube, podcast or on TalkSport 2's uh, radio show. Uh, you're watching or listening to following on County Cricketer. OK, guys, well, welcome back to George de Bell. Happy birthday to you as well. Hope you had a lovely week away in Italy. Um, well, since you've been gone, well, we haven't had uh, a test men's captain announced. We haven't had Rob Key speaking, but we have had plenty of uh, action on the field. First up, uh, Ben Stokes, 17 sixes in his return to, uh, to county cricket. Um, and uh, yeah, just a reminder... Uh, that England do have a, a fair bit of talent alongside the, the returning Joe Root as well. So uh, a good week of, uh, of cricket. Um, I'll start with you, though, Harmy. Um, where shall we start? Because uh, we could talk a bit about Ben Stokes, but off the back of that, KP got involved, retweeting some uh, footage of just one or two of Ben Stokes' 17 sixes. Uh, and not for the first time, slamming county cricket and suggesting that uh, the standard isn't quite up to uh, up to stretch. Yeah, I, I, I've never changed my opinion of Kevin. I think when he, he speaks, he speaks with the game trying to move forward. I just don't think he's, as usual, thought about what the ramifications are for when he opens his mouth. Um, and that are largely down to 18 first-class counties. Yes, you can argue that the bowling was friendly towards Ben Stokes. You can argue that Whatever challenges we have in the in the game of cricket, the one thing I will say about Kevin Peterson, I'm not sure he'd be the superstar he would if it was if the if the if the system had had been changed because 18 first class counties gives you a, a lot of cricket as a chance to meet late developers to potentially have you know, a cricket in of employment in their mid twenties. I think that's what Kevin did when he came over from Peter Maritzburg a few years ago. So I think he's got to be careful. I understand what he's saying. Want to make county cricket better? That's no question whatsoever. But I think there's there's ways and means of doing it, and unfortunately, Kevin's franchise system I don't think would work. What about you, George? Welcome back, by the way. Thank you. Nice to be back. I'm kind of. Um, I, I admire Kevin uh, for having the courage to rock the boat. I think English cricket needs to have its boat rocked. And I think it'd be really helpful to have the franchise debate. Now, as it happens, I don't agree with, the with, with his conclusions at this stage, but, you know, it's through debate that we learn and maybe he's got good ideas in there somewhere. So I've got no problem with him banging that drum and that being his agenda. I think it comes from a good place. I think he means well. What I do have a bit of a problem with is him using an 18-year-old as an example of everything that's wrong with county cricket. I thought that was unfair and I thought it was unkind. Uh, I thought that actually that over was okay. What, what, you, what I've seen in uh, when the times that bowlers have been murdered in that way, Stuart Broad, Ben Stokes, uh, Malcolm Nash, is that they tend to stick to the same thing, haven't they? And it seemed that Baker was kind of trying to bowl his stock ball again and again, and you could argue that was quite brave, you, you, you know, that he was trying to get in court. Now, maybe a wiser, older cricketer would have fired one in wide of the stumps either side maybe they would maybe he should have done but he's 18 and there are quite a lot of good things about that I didn't see any long hops or full tosses in that spell so I, I thought it was really harsh and the other irony as Harmy points out is that in a franchise system good luck picking an 18 year old spinner who actually could go on and have a really really good career he could be the new Daniel Vittori I don't want to put too much pressure on him but he is that sort of bowler it's good luck trying to pick someone like that. Equally, good luck getting Ben Stokes to play while the IPL's going on. So, a lot of bowlers have had bad days, a lot of batters too, and it's part of the um, formative learning stages of their career. And I thought it was really harsh to pick on an 18-year-old 
and use him as an example of a, a, a system that's broken. There are problems for the system. I really genuinely uh, commend Kevin for caring enough to stick his head above the parapet because he knows it's going to get kicked. And I think we should have the debate about franchises. I really do. I think we should have the debate. I'd like to air it, and to be honest, I'd like to refute it. But uh, the way he did it, I don't know, it was really clumsy uh, and unfair on, on a young bowler who, who you know, to, to, to say that he's a, uh, a symbol of decline is desperately unfair. Uh, what about you, Nick? Uh, franchise cricket, does that keep you awake at night? <laughs> um, I, just, I agree with everything that George said, to be honest. Um, I was mainly going to talk about Baker rather than Stokes or rather than anything else. You know, he was in the under-19, in England under-19 squad that were, you know, a game away from being under-19 world champions a few months ago. And, and when that was going on, everyone was, you know, everyone was tweeting about it, watching these, watching these kids go and, you know, batter sides that, you know, maybe in the past they might not have beaten and people talking about how that meant the future was bright and suddenly you bowl one over that gets taken down by a bloke who's, you know, among, among the best players that England have ever produced on a pitch that was good enough to produce 500s, um, it went into, its, went into its fourth day. I mean, you know, social media can clip up anything, can't it? You know, you, we, we've had Rory Burns bowling, Mohamed Rizwan bowling. That doesn't mean the championship's declining. It means that the pitch are good enough that teams have seen that the game's done. They don't, they don't want to flog their bowlers into the dirt. Like, you can, I think Kevin had a go at, um, I mean, at that earlier on in the competition when Rory, Rory Burns was bowling. And, you know, that's, as I say, you know, is that, does that happen in an ideal world? No, but, but, but actually, this is you know, this time last year we were having the complete opposite chat, weren't we? That there weren't enough runs and you know bowlers were having too much success, and suddenly now the bowlers getting carted around on a flat one, and we're being told that the bowlers can't bowl. So you know, and as George says, an eighteen-year-old kid, who you, you, for what it's worth is is everything he'd want in a young left-arm spinner. He's tall, he bowls at a good pace, he bats. He's done it on, on he's done it at Worcester, where where it's not that easy to bowl. Where there've been a lot of runs in the last couple of years. Um, certainly not that easy to bowl spin. I mean, he sort of. I think until he came in last year, Worcester didn't really have a red ball spinner. Brett Oliveira was doing the job. Moe Ali was at the IPL. He came in, gave a very good go. He's he's only he only turns nineteen next week. There there is a lot going for him, um, and and frankly, you know if he, you know I think he'll be the, he'll be a guy that I'll be watching a lot more than others in the next couple of weeks because if he can come and take two for his three for his four for his on the back of this, and actually you've probably taught a lot more about him than than what you are in the space of six balls that have been clipped up for social by a guy with a massive following. So. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, Graham Napier hit sixteen sixes for Essex against Surrey, twenty eleven, I think it was. Yasser Arafat, Chris Tremblett, Gareth Batty, Stuart Meeker, Zana De Bruyne, not club bowlers. It happens. You play on a flat one, you get a guy who's seeing like a beach ball. In that case, Graham Napier. In this case, one of, as I say, one of the best players that England have seen. Um, you know, it, not everything has to be as black and white as, look what's wrong with the game. Look at you know the game's dead. Like, just 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 applaud the batting and say that. You know, it's a kid on the flat one and move on. I think. Just, yeah. just, just. Can I jump in again there, John? Well, I think you have to also remind Kevin of what the county championship is about, and um, wonder about the, as Harmy suggested, whether he's thought it through. Because if if you are asking for outside investment, you are asking to start judging this purely as a financial uh, business, uh, in the same way that you might IPL teams in the, lo in the long run. I think that's really unwise. I think that shows a bit of a misunderstanding, a lack of understanding about what the championship is. For me, it's always been a bit like judging uh, education or vaccines or the health service. You cannot judge these things purely by what money they bring in. They are about building, they are about investment. And uh, I, I thought it was an interesting time to make the comment, you know, at the, at the moment we're seeing water companies make profits while they flush our rivers with sewage, while you're seeing energy companies put prices up and pay huge dividends to their shareholders and uh, bonus executives. That seems to be the way that cricket is going. I think it's a bad way. I think it's, uh, we've got something quite special with uh, basically this mutual organisation with uh, the counties owned by their members. And uh, just something I always think is worth remembering, in that COVID summer of 2020, the two counties that were least keen to play championship cricket that summer were the ones that were not county owned. They were the ones that were privately owned. I think that's really, really revealing. So as soon as you have uh, franchise investment, they are going to want to return. They're going to want to return. And, and, and I'd be really interested to see a list of all the players that have come through that have been developed by franchise tournaments. They, they will be basically parasites. 
I think it's. Uh, I, I understand what uh, Kevin's concerns, and I, again, I'll say they think they come from a good place, and he's a good man. But I think it's a simplistic solution, and um, he hasn't really thought it through. And the example was really, really clumsy. Anything else, guys? Before we move on. No, no. I just think that Marvel and you know we talk about Ben Stokes and what he did. If you, if that was the the example he wanted to make. It just shows that you know the the gulf of players that are playing international cricket, um, and what fantastic talent we've got. Um, what I will say about the county so far, which has been knocked over the winter, um, you've got to start somewhere, and I think we're starting at a good place now. We are producing flat pitches and runs. If you do that, bowlers will get better, and all of a sudden the bowlers will catch up, and then it's up the batters to then adapt to it later on in the season what we're seeing now is you know the leading wicket takers in this country um are good bowlers you know Potts has got a bit of pace Hassan Ali international bowler Mohammed Abbas international bowler bowlers with a bit of pace Patterson from Dave Patterson from South Africa bit of pace that's what we want to see if the batters can score runs on good pitches the top bowlers are quick bowlers what we need to produce will get better and I think we, we've got to start somewhere and I actually think if we're starting on pitches like we are now English cricket will get better that's dead right that's, Chris... that's ex exactly right because it's going to force counties to pick bowlers with either extreme pace excellent skills or spinners with a bit of bite and we've just started we're 100 metres into a 30 mile journey it's going to take a long time English cricket is in a low ebb but to abandon everything that's built it up for years and as you say abandon all the principles that helped Kevin be one of the best players English cricket's ever had because he sure as hell wasn't a good batter when he came to England and England become the number one team in the world winner T20 World Cup of which he was an absolutely integral part uh, you know let's remember the things that built that and actually it was playing four day championship cricket on good pitches through the middle of the season with the best players and if you have a franchise tournament you'll have the players it'll be the same people who own the IPL teams you're not going to see Ben Stokes in the county championship and by the way exactly what happened to Baker happened to Ben Stokes we all saw it happen uh, these things happen to good players have bad days and uh, I thought it was really nice that uh, Ben Stokes reached out to him although I'd have been surprised if he hadn't and, you know, we don't know exactly what he said, but basically said these things happen. You'll learn from it. Really good. And, yeah, we should probably be focusing on the, on the marvel that is Ben Stokes rather than um, an 18-year-old who had a trying day. And I'll say again, I don't think he, he wilted under pressure. I thought he did okay. Mm. You can't just judge on results. Well, let's uh, concentrate. Let's marvel on uh, some of the runs and some of the wickets uh, with the top line. The top line. Okay, top line then, guys. Uh, has anybody got a top line that doesn't involve Ben Stokes? Nick? George? Harmy? No. <laughs> Dom Sibley. I mean it. Well, well, there's not anyone out there who doesn't think Ben Stokes is a really terrific international cricketer, is there? There's, you know, it's hardly breaking news. And while it was quite exceptional, it's not like he hasn't done something very similar before. Did he not hit Liam Dawson for five sixes in a row very early in his career? Right. First championship game I was playing. He got 99, I think he got, in his first championship game at the Aegeus Bowl. And he, I, I, I don't know, I want to ask Ben this, because I, if I remember this right, I actually think he didn't try and hit the last ball for six. He hit it for four. He didn't try and run down a wicket and belt it for six, if I can remember. Something in my mind is telling me that. But again, it was, and these weren't sixes. The five sixes at the Aegeus Bowl weren't sixes, they were eight. They were massive. They were going out the ground, they were huge. So he has done it before. Okay, so yeah, you know, you know, it's hardly breaking news, exceptional though it is. And he has done it to, you know, Pat Cummins and all sorts of other people. So, you know, um, but Dom Sibley is rebuilding his game. And I, I think I've said in previous weeks, he looks good, but now he's got the score to show for it. I thought it was very interesting. I can't remember word for word what he said, but Bumble has been quite a vocal critic of Don Sibley over the last couple of years. And he was full of praise for him. Um, and basically his technique looks... Uh, more orthodox he's opened up the offside he is still solid he is still patient he carried his bat uh, through an innings where every other Warwickshire batter struggled he got I, I think he what did he get 182 in the game for once out uh, I, I, I think they'll be very reluctant England to pick a, a, an opening pair 
of Lees and Sibley and then push Crawley to three. I just think that might they might feel that that is a bit defensive. But he is pushing himself back into into the reckoning. Now. It might come a bit not, not not come soon enough for for this first test squad, which I think is announced in a week. But it's coming, and um, that's got to be good news for English cricket. On his, on the defensiveness, is I, I wonder. I, I don't know. Certainly, it's just a I'm just thinking aloud, really. That I mean, I've said. I think we've all said before on here that, and a lot of guys have said that when you come back for your second go, if you come back for your second go, there are a lot of things you do differently, you need, and you would know, and you would know to do differently. And I do wonder, given the freedom he's played with in domestic stuff since he's come since he's come back into that, and the way he's changed his game, whether actually he would get the same defensive player as it were if he got another go in Stash cricket, or whether, you know, maybe he's maybe some of this time has been sent spent thinking about sort of the nuances of you know a middle ground I guess and actually whether you whether you didn't just see someone who was as solid as before but but as I guess as you've, as you've said about the changes he's made to his game whether you saw whether, you, whether we found someone who who had a lot more options options in his game but if he did did go well second time round you might look back at that first team and said actually you know he started with a pretty good base you know it was hard to get out didn't necessarily go anywhere fast but came back in a year or two years later with with a far more rounded game and I guess that is an advert for for a lot of guys, isn't it? I mean, I think I'd like. I mean, I want to touch on Sam Robson later, but it, I guess he sort of fits into the same same discussion as this, doesn't he? He got 149 in in a brilliant Middlesex win that I'm sure we will touch on later. But Robson is the perfect example, isn't he? Where, where what eight years down the line from his seven tests, where he averaged 30, um, people at the time said it was a friendly attack and that 30 wasn't very much. But actually, now if you average 30 in your first seven tests in England batter, you'd you'd be framed, wouldn't you? Like there's you'd be you'd be talked as captaincy material if you did that through the next seven tests. I mean, that's and that's not necessarily being churlish, but it's just, I think we've realised since Strauss and perhaps through three, four, five, twenty-three, 23 or whatever it is now, openers have had a go since then, that it's not, it's not easy to come in and average 40 straight away. So whether a Robson is, you know, I think Robson should be well in the frame. He's the right age profile, I think, for someone who understands their game. He's had a lot of time in the domestic game. He's scored a lot of runs, scored a lot of runs at Lords, where it's not easy to bat. Who goes away and plays great cricket in Australia, which is what England have been looking for. Um, yeah, and he's scoring big, big match-winning runs, albeit in Division Two, but against a, you know, Ollie Robinson in in a pretty in a pretty strong Division Two at the moment as well. So, I'd chuck his name onto that same pile as George's, put Sibley there. Um, I think both would be very solid options if England went with him this summer. Uh, Harmy, I've just checked out that Ben Stokes innings. By the way, Harmy, one sec. Not only he did get a century. You're right. He took a single from the final ball of the over against Liam Dawson. Ben Stokes. Um, he ended up with 136 not out. You were injured, so you couldn't bowl, but you're in the side. And he also took three wickets in and over. Yeah, I remember that. I brought my wrist. Philip Mustard hit me on the yeah. arm at the non-striker's end, smashed it back at me while I was taking the mickey out of Dominic Cork because he was belting yeah. him everywhere. <laughs> Refused a single, and the next ball, mother kick it, did me, didn't it? He whacked it straight back at me and brought me wrist. But just on, <laughs> just on Sibley, on Sibley and on Robson, coming back into the test side, there's one thing you need to happen. You need to, you need to put right what was going wrong before. And I seen two shots of Dom Sibley the other day. He hit an extra cover drive, and I thought, wow, that's a good shot. Something you didn't have before. And he played a back foot. He played a back foot punch, which I think he, he has and he, he he had played before. But he looked in total control, a lot of balance, and he looked as though he wasn't. It wasn't a force to hit that extra cover where it was before, which got a man a hell of a lot of trouble outside of Stump to get nicked off. So what you want is you want somebody to come back in the side who has actually put a few things right that were mm. constantly getting him into trouble. And it looks like he's he's well on the way. Whether Sam Robson's in the same, you know, time will tell. But I think on coming into that, I think that's what you want. If a young batsman goes out the side, you want him to be better when he comes back in, not physically, not mentally, but technically, because he's been left out because of technical reasons. Um, no question, no question whatsoever on his temperament, Sibley. None whatsoever. I think that kid was made temperamentally for Test cricket, opening the baton because he batted for long periods, excellent concentration. It was just the one thing he just kept getting out in the same way. And international bowlers will knock you over if you've got a weakness like that. If he's done that better, then he's fine. My top line. I know Nick's mentioned the, the Middlesex game, but my top line is Tom Hines, declaration, 370, to try and win a game, risk losing it to try and win it. If you do that as a captain, more often than not, you'll win matches. And for me, I thought that was quite refreshing from a young captain 
to do what he did, give Middlesex a chance, but also risk, mm. risk. You know, he's risk lost again, but he tried to win it. And if we've got captains yeah. like that, I think we'll get a lot of good good cricketers out of first class cricket with mentalities like that. It was a really, really interesting declaration, wasn't it? Because there was a lot of different things going on in the game. I think they left it. So I think they left it too late for a second new ball. They had to bowl a lot of spin to to get their over eight numbers back up to to, to avoid a penalty. But then Middlesex were missing Robbie White, who dislocated his shoulder. Um, but Middlesex had also scored 700 at home last year. And um, But equally, from Middlesex perspective, they'd lost a few games last year defending 350. So it was one of those... <laughs> it was a really interesting one, because so all sorts of sort of nuance knocking around. Ollie Robinson, obviously, back as well, but I think they were quite wary of flogging him into the ground. George Garton's first game after a pretty long bout of long COVID. Um, so there was all, all kinds of stuff that I imagine were going through <laughs> Sussex Myers when they made that call so as you say good on them for ultimately they were they came nowhere close but um, but yeah all, I think I think I, I think both teams would say that anything could have happened in that in that fourth innings given all the sort of narratives around where that game was at. I think Shaheen had been ill that morning as well so perhaps Sussex looked, looked at it and thought they needed eight wickets rather than ten but um, yeah as you say you'll be, on, you'll be on the right end of them eventually OK, so I think you successfully argued the case for Dom Sibley there, George. So that's the top line. Not Stokes, not Middlesex, but uh, we could talk about Middlesex a bit more in uh, top three moments of the week. Moments of the week. OK, moments of the week. We've already mentioned a couple of them. Uh, Joe Root coming back to cricket. Um, um, ben Stokes doing what Ben Stokes does. We spoke about Dom Sibley, um, Haynes and the declaration. Let's talk about Middlesex actually because, you know, top of the table, Division 2, they've got off to a, a really good start. They seem to have the bowling and, um, well, they showed they got the batting as well with that, uh, that second innings. Didn't Middlesex chase down a massive score against Yorkshire once when Joe Root captained? I think that was at Lords a few yeah, years Chris, back. Chris they Rogers, did. wasn't it? Chris Rogers, yeah, 180 odd. Chris, Chris Rogers, by the way, is a perfect example of. He's a perfect precedent for that Sam Robson, um, certainly Sam Robson, age-wise. Yeah, Rogers, yeah, Voges, yeah. Middlesex men. I think yeah. it helped Robson a lot, actually, in that, in that sense. Yeah, Robson got a duck in the first innings as well, and, and he hadn't strung too many scores together, so that was a big innings for him. But I think Middlesex have really impressed me the start of the season. Um, I won't mention Surrey, but, you know, they turned out another win again. Um, Glamorgan again, the boys from the Valleys, George. You must be delighted to see them second in the, second in the table. Um, Durham with a, a little bit to do, though, Harvey. Yeah, just Durham just can't win a game. They can draw, draw plenty, but they just can't seem to get over the line. Um, my an interesting one for me was the Hampshire one, when um, I think James Vince gave himself two night watchmen, and then Donald, was it Donald and Fuller put 100 on for the, la what, the last wicket. Yeah. To, to give them a chance of, you know, chasing what? Oh, the chase. Well, the chase 360. They left Gloucester, something like 360. So 100 for the last wicket and winning the game by 87 runs is, yeah, that was uh, that was good from, from Hampshire's lower order. Um, yeah, but Durham do have a bit of work to do. They can score as many runs as they want, but if you can't take 20 wickets, you ain't winning cricket matches. Else, uh, George or Nick, where were you? Nick? I saw you at the Oval on. Oh, I only Friday, I just did it at the Oval. I did it at the Oval, and that was I was rather I was just taken up with other things. But um, but on actually on on Harmy's point with with Donald, um, is he were certainly worth a shout out just for the simple fact that was his first game since first game since twenty nineteen. I think he's been desperately uh, battered by injuries, really, isn't he? I think I think it was the ACL. Um, but he's missed two years of cricket. That was his first competitive game since since September two thousand nineteen. So um, fair play for making it count, I guess, more than anything. Um, but yeah, no, I um, yeah, I mean, I was I was following Middlesex. I was at the Oval. Sorry, look, sorry, look, very good. I mean, I know you don't want to talk about them, John, but um, if we do it on your behalf, then maybe that's you could, yeah. maybe that's fairer. Um, they just look very good. They've got ten batters and about ten bowlers. Um, Ryan Patel's an all-rounder at the top of the order, and then you've got Jamie Overton, who's an older all-rounder at number 10. Um, John Clark got the highest ever Surrey score by number nine last week, and he, when he didn't get any this week, Overton and Gus Atkinson got 60 each. And I guess similarly to that Hampshire game, where they sort of went for a pretty middling total that would have put North Ants in the game to to 400 on. And I think John Sadler admitted afterwards that it, it sort of basically killed their spirit, going from um, you know winning the toss, bowling, having them 260-odd for eight, and then, and then suddenly being miles behind the game within a session. 
Um, but the wickets come from anywhere. Sam Curran didn't bowl at all in the game, but got his runs. I don't think Ryan Patel bowled in the game, but they got Colin de Grandom in as a replacement for Kemar Roach, who, who, who was almost ideal on the pitch that they played on, actually. And also, and obviously also Bats. Um, they just look extremely well set. They, they, they've not picked Verdi or Moriarty, um, but they've got Will Jackson off spin at number four and number five. Ollie Pope was missing. Jamie Smith was missing. They, they've they just got every single base covered. Cam Steele's not played yet. He bowls leg spin and Bats. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, folks didn't keep in this... Folks didn't keep, I don't think. Well, folks didn't play last week, so they got Ollie Pope to keep because Jamie Smith got a double hundred. Uh, but folks was back for this one. It, they, there's just options coming out their ears at the moment, and, and fair play. They, they, I think rectified what they didn't do last year as well, which is they kept on drawing at the Oval on you know big, flat, high scoring pitches. They've actually had their two big draws away from the Oval, and they've won their three games at home. So um, hard to stop, I think, based on the early evidence. But but I guess they'll lose players to England at some point, and then. Um, yeah, you know, then they'll go again. Oh, so they've lost the toss, I think, four times out of five as well. Mm. Um, uh, Matt Parkinson, uh, George, or, or Harmy, weighed in with some more wickets. Social media star on Twitter, I see again. Commentary being uh, tweeted out. I think he took six wickets, didn't he? Just six. He's doing, it, doing everything right, isn't he? Doing everything yeah. right. And as, as Nick said, increasingly are answering my doubts I suppose which about whether he can do the holding role as well because whether you like it or not you've got to and uh, he, he's doing both so uh, he, he might well be in pole position I mean it, 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 they're picking the squad soon yeah they're picking the squad after one more round of games uh, on the week beginning the 16th so, so um, he's probably in isn't he well, he seems like the kind of player Stokes. He's, see, he would fit the Stokes mould from the outside looking in, wouldn't he, Harmy? If you're picking, if you're picking Broad and Anderson, you have to pick Parkinson. And the problem is who bats at number eight, and that's your your other conundrum on bowler, because you've got if you pick Broad and Anderson, you're picking bowlers that <clears throat> aren't going to blow teams away. You're going to contain very, very well and do what they do well. You're going to need something different as a captain, and that would be the leg spinner um, to blow a tail away to knock over somebody that's you know that that gets set on a good pitch and I think he's done that quite well Parkinson but then you've got to find somebody that can play that sort of second all rounder role at, at number eight and then you you're looking at the likes of Wokes Overton Robinson and then you go back to the conundrum well can we really play them and Anderson and Broad on the same side but if you've got a leg spinner it changes the dynamics a little bit, and I think because of that, um, I think Matt Parkinson to shoe in for the first Test match. It might be relevant that I don't think Wokes can play because he's not playing this week in the Championship game against North Hants, mm. and that would mean they'd have to pick him for the squad before he's played a Championship game this season. I just don't see that as uh, he, he might be there, but I don't see him as being a realistic option for the Test team anymore. So that's I, I don't know how much Stokes. I, I mean, I genuinely don't know how much Stokes rates. Parkinson, but I can tell you in the nets, I have at times feared for Parkinson's well-being because Stokes murders him. I mean, he murders him uh, in, in a way that uh, I mean, I've seen him hit the ball back at him several times. I've seen him hit, take blows on the arms and in the body. I've honestly feared for him. Uh, I, it didn't look as if he uh, rated him particularly, but he does have that ability, doesn't he, as a batter to make it look like all bowlers are, you know, insufficient. So. Uh, I think it would be really interesting, but he, you, again, you can't say he can have done any, any more. And if we are serious about change and getting different results, probably got to do a few things differently. So um, he, he probably has done enough already, hasn't he? It's unfortunate uh, for Wokes, though, isn't it? Because you'd say that going into the winter, not many people would have said that Chris Wokes should be in his linchpin in Australia and the Caribbean, would they? And if he'd not been we'd probably come into the summer saying we've got a very, very good English condition bowler in Chris Wokes. It'd be a bit of a shame if his international career was sort of drawn a line under on the back of not performing in conditions where historically he's not really mastered it, but then didn't get another go in England where where we know he's as good as anything that England have had in recent times. Yeah, he's got a better record at, in home test than Anderson abroad, which is incredible and obviously adds that, that batty. Look, Robinson's done enough to come back yeah. into the side I think I mean you might want to see him play one more game to make sure that he can come through it but the worry with Robinson is he did bat 8 didn't he for Sussex he, he's looked 
Uh, he's looked a, a number 11 for England, hasn't he, since, since his first or second test innings. Um, it would be lovely if he... He, he could so, develop his batting. I, I believe he could develop his batting, but he doesn't look like an eight at the moment. And that has a knock-on effect to who else you pick, as Harmy suggests. I'm not sure Brawl gets back in, by the way. I mean, what's he, he's played one game so far and looked all right. But, uh, you know, if you're picking on anything like form, I don't know, do you want Broad and Anderson? We've got to stop talking about them as the same person, haven't we? They're different people um, so, uh, with different skills now as well. So... Uh, I, I don't know that Broad's a shoe in I, I know that there's been a lot of talk about they're our best bowlers and all the rest of it, but you know, he's had quite a long layoff. I don't do, look. Broad may well come back into the side, but I'd be surprised if he played five more tests. We're at that stage of the career, aren't we? Aren't we? I mean, aren't we? <clears throat> I'm playing both in the first test match. I think you've got to start trying to win games and then worry about the future. In the future, I think you. And that's the same as the, the top of the order. Um, pick our, our best players that we feel as though we can win this week. Worry about next week, next week. And Broad and Anderson, in my opinion, their experience, their control, the, the, that's, the, that's the thing that we didn't have in the winter. We had no control whatsoever from either end. You start somewhere, build small blocks and start going again. We got a leg spinner, which I think we possibly have to play. We might... Uh, that decision might then have a, not a ramification for somebody like Folks from a week even point of view. Stokes goes to six, Root's gone to four. Best only fits in one place, and that's behind the stumps. And then well, does he though? Does he though? Well, wait there. He, he, we have to come back into come back to England, having not kept for ages, and go into a Test match as a keeper. When's he going to be back? I don't know. But, uh, I don't think he gets a Champo game, does he? Uh, and even if he did, you know, it would be it would be one. And there was a time when we wouldn't have thought that was enough. Look, I think they'll go for Overton, uh, partly because of the point you make, Harmy, that he'll, he'll, I, I would be worried about a tale of what is that? Robinson, Broad, Anderson, Parkinson. Parkinson. It's it's a worry, isn't it? I, I don't I don't even know who goes at eight. I guess Robinson. <laughs> so I, I think that Overton oh, will play. I think it'll be uh, more likely to be Overton, Anderson, Robinson, Parkinson. But you know, it's very, very difficult to predict anything when you actually don't know who's selecting the side yet. You don't know who's selecting the side, or who's you know who's selecting the side, or who's coaching the side, or well, right. So we don't know who's selected it, and we don't know that, it, that that they're going to make competent decisions. Let, let's remember that Gary Kirsten is the man who, when appointed as a Welsh fire coach wrote very much looking forward to insert name here you know as a tweet does he know is he watching these scores has he seen enough of these players or is he going to be very reliant on Rob Key and Ben Stokes so you mean you would think whoever took over is going to be hugely reliant on them right now so who's um, picking the side is James Teller picking the side he'll be involved yeah guys shall we move on to race to laws we kind of broached into that subject anyway but uh, let's have a look at the runners and the riders. Race to Lords. Okay, so this time last week I was threatening to drop Rory Burns, Sam Robson and Dom Sibley from Race to Lords if they didn't get a score. And Rory Burns hit 107. Sam Robson hit a match winning 149 in second innings. And Dom Sibley hit 142 not out. So they're back in. Uh, we've had a couple of new entries as well. Joe Root hit 75 against Essex and uh, a little known uh, New Zealand born all rounder called Ben Stokes hit 161 from 88 balls, 8 fours, 17 sixes, but uh, struggled with the ball. Not for 38 and not for 47. Uh, Surrey's Ollie Pope didn't uh, play. Ben Folks uh, did. He hit 16 against Northampton. Sam Curran has gone past 5,000 first class runs, yet to score a century. Um, he hit 73. Alex Lees, 60 not out. And 27 against Worcestershire. I'm sorry, Nick. I'm going to, we're ejecting two players. One of them's James Bracey. Um, he hit another duck and two against Hampshire. So he will not feature now. I don't think he is going to make the race to Lords. And I'm also thinking of dropping Adam Live because he has not had a great start to the season. I don't think anybody's really considering him for a place in England's uh, top two now. So uh, he hit 10 against Essex, so he's gone. Um, should I drop Don Best from the race to Lords? 
Hoş geldin. Hoş... Yeah, I think so. No, I think you, I think you drop him. Drop him. Tommy says drop him. Fred, Nick says drop him. Well, it's two. Okay, so Bess has gone as well. Uh, he did get take three wickets in the first innings. North fifty two in second. My man Darwin Milan, another fifty. I notice. Did you see, by the way, Harmy? I said I argued strongly that Joe Root should return to four, and it looks like he uh, will be returning to four. That does leave number three open, where Milan, of course, did quite well at the start of the Ashes. Um, Harry Brook, we mentioned him last week. He is a new entry. He hit 123. Um, yeah, wow. He has to play at Lords. He has to play at Lords in that that number five spot. He's got to play at Lords at number five spot. It, uh, you know, I can't disagree. I mean, I think he's. Uh, I, I think that's a really bold call, but I can't mm. disagree with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think he's the only option. I mean, you're, you're basically saying he's playing ahead of Pope. Yeah, Lawrence. Well, I'm Lawrence. not sure Lawrence is Lawrence fit. Lawrence, and fit, I mean, Lawrence fit. hasn't been fit for a couple of weeks, has he? And, no. Oh, and Pope wasn't. So he'd need to play this Pope week. Was Ill, Pope was ill last week as well. I mean, I'm, I'd assume he's recovered. Um, yeah, I think. Pope well, I think the one, the one, the one thing I'd say on Brook, and this isn't. I, I, I sort of. I think I agree with Harmy. I, I would just say it to be mildly cautionary, which um, that if he doesn't have a great series against New Zealand, it doesn't make him awful. It makes him a 23 year old who's had a very good start of the season, averages 33 in first class cricket, and all the and is hitting all the right notes, and and has been well spoken of for a very long time, and sure will be. You know, we will hope will be the player we're going to be looking for. But that doesn't, if he doesn't start well in two, three tests, as we've said before with other young lads, whether it's Bracey or Lawrence or Crane or anyone else we've spoken about the last few weeks, it doesn't make him a bad cricketer or a bad player. It doesn't make the championship a bad product. It doesn't make it doesn't mean he's been scoring the wrong runs in the wrong position. Like it, it might, it may well just mean that he's, 20, he's a twenty-three-year-old coming up against very good bowlers. And um, but we hope he averages <laughs> fifty in his first series and never never leaves that spot. But um, I think I think it is worth saying because. Um, otherwise, we throw a lad into who, for a test debut on the back you, of the big runs, and we. Would, the thing is, though, if Brook plays at five, that means Besto plays at seven. That would be my solution. I Besto at seven. Might... You're gonna. The, I think the conversation with Milan would be an interesting one. Whether Milan gets another go at three, scoring a lot of runs, experience. I mean, bear in mind, we, we we're working on the theory that we're trying to win the next game with our best side at this minute in time. Probably Milan is probably our calmest option to go in at number three. And if you look at that, then Brook has to play because the amount of runs that Brook has scored this year, batting with David Milan in a comfortable environment of, of county cricket on good pitch, then if you're bringing a debutant in, you've got to try and make him as comfortable as he possibly can from your point of view to then go against the opposition. And I think that dynamic would, would potentially work. Um, Brook, for me, over Pope, I think Oli Pope is a fantastic cricketer. I really do. I think he's one of the best young cricketers we have produced in a long time. But his consistency, not only with bat, but with being actually being on the field in the recent past, has to put Harry Harry Brook in front. Has to put Brook in front of him because he's played one, missed one, played one, missed one. Where Brook's played four championship games, he's got 635 runs, an average of 150. You pick people on form, and if you've got heads or tails, I think for me, you go with a young man from Yorkshire. I think if you're picking, that's I think the form thing's important, isn't it? Especially, especially when you're playing mid-season, more mid sorry, test matches in the middle of the English summer. If you're going to bring a youngster in, pick him with you know you've got to give him the best chance. I mean, the best chance is when they're in the form of their life. So you'd rather pick if there is a time to pick Harry Brook as a 23-year-old. It is now, isn't it? There's no, I think that was almost the best argument for it. The fact, I mean, not the potential he's shown for a few years. It's the fact that if you're not going to pick him now, he's never going to come into an England team in a better spot than he currently is, is he? That's, um, yeah. And then you can, I guess, I guess it gives you a better chance of making an early judgment. It, although, even though I said, I don't think you should make, I don't think we should be making early judgments. You certainly, he will certainly be in a better spot to succeed than, than if he comes in on the back of averaging 35 or something. So what, what, what do you do with Pope then? He just doesn't play at this stage. He bides his time. He waits, he bides his time, he scores runs. He does what every other young English batsman should be doing. Especially on these surfaces runs. now. Just go, he's, just not, go he's, not, he's not he's not started badly. a little bit more. He's, no, not, he's, not, he's, not, started, he's not started badly for any stretch of the imagination, but he's played one, missed one, played one, missed one. 
I mean, uh, the, there's well, a fitness element there. There's, there's, there. Yeah, but I'm looking at I'm looking at a young player who is in the form of his life. I've got to pick one mm. of them. I think yeah, well, you, uh, Bo the... an option there as well, aren't there? I mean, there? There are a few yeah, options, aren't there? You've got to throw him in. You've got to throw him and in. There is an option at number three if you don't go with someone like experience of Milan. I think they might be a bit reluctant to go root Bairstow Stokes. That's four, five, six. It just, I don't know, it doesn't feel like progress. But, you know, we, we shall see. Uh, you know, as you say, the other option is to give uh, Bairstow the gloves back. I, I don't know. I wouldn't. I think it shows uh, James how Vince, exceptional. Is he, is he out? Is James Vince gone? 78 and 15. There's another little bit of uh, security maybe coming in at number three. I think it just highlights what an exceptional start the summer has been, runs wise, that, that we're in a position where you can justifiably say that Ollie Pope is averaging 64, 65, you know, hasn't done enough <laughs> to get in at number yeah. five. I and mean, we've not even mentioned Sean Dixon, who's, I'm not saying Sean Dixon's in England running, but. But, you know, in most years, if you had a lad who'd scored 400s in four games or whatever it's been um, and was the leading run score in the championship and, you know, we've you know we've got 40 minutes in, Ben Compton's not come up. And in a normal summer, I'm not saying they'd be in the England running, but it, but it's mad. It's just extraordinary how many runs there have been, isn't it, this first month of the season. Um, but it is quite nice to be in a position, I think, where if there is, where it doesn't necessarily feel black and white. So if they, if, if they did go Milan, you you know, you couldn't say that that was unjustified. If they went Bohannon, you couldn't say that was unjustified. If they left Pope out, you, you could easily say, well, Harry Brooks had the summer of his life and, and vice versa. You could say if Ollie Pope starts, he's probably, you know, he's a very good player and he's had a very good start as well. So it is, I guess, quite a nice spot to be. And obviously the proof will be in what happens in June. But but yeah, I just think that is, on a wider level, quite a nice place given where we've been recently. So, so you know this thing about you've got to pick the side that you think's best and there's no doubt some sense in that. I just think a worry that you have an England side there that could look like this uh, Milan, Root, Bearstow, Stokes, Anderson, Broad. Mm. I, I don't know. Are you, it's always a balance between building for the future and picking the best side. It's always a balance. I mean, it's not black and white. So I, I, I would be reluctant not to give some of these guys a go. And, and um, you know, whether it's Bohannon or Brooks Pope, I think they're all. I think they're all decent players. But if you pick them, you've got to give them a decent chance. Can't be a couple of games. Mm. I think there's also okay. some guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't they, be bothered if you went down that them. road from, from that, from that, the, the older players. The problem you've got now is England are one win from 18 Test matches. If them, if them five, six senior players are going to get England into three wins from five Test matches this summer, going into South Africa, I wouldn't have a problem with that because you can integrate youngsters into a, a winning side. What we've seen recently is integrating youngsters into a shambolic side where keep getting beat every time. Then you're not going there. You're just going round and round in circles. So start winning. You, you're, you're right. A you're player in here, and you've got a chance. But aren't these the guys who have been beaten a lot? Yeah, that's what I mean. But we're in English conditions, and we've always said we are okay. better in English conditions. Sure. And the guys that are in these guys are actually in a little bit of form. That being belted for, hmm. you know, runs of wickets in in they've got they've got they've got runs and wickets under their belt going into what is going to be a tough tough three test matches against New Zealand but we've got to start winning we've got to start winning somehow and if we keep chucking player after player in and we're going round the vision circle then we'll be still having this conversation in a year's time after going to Pakistan and New Zealand in the winter and being builded by them we've been having this conversation for about two years I suppose it shows the importance of getting a head coach and a selector in place right let's uh, head to oh by the way Sakeem Mahmood Jack Leach Craig Overton Jimmy Anderson did not play nor did Stuart Broad uh, let's get to the mailbag the mailbag. Okay, this is a section of the show where we answer your questions. Uh, we've just got a couple this week because we've got to do, uh, well, we're, we're always fighting time. Uh, can I just say, though, if you want to get 20% off a 12 edition subscription of The Cricketer magazine, go to thecricketer.com forward slash talk sport and uh, yeah, you'll get your uh, 20% off. Thanks for reminding me, guys, by the way. None of Seem you reminded me. Seamless. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Uh, okay, this one's for you, Harmy, and it's from Simon Martin Martindell um, on uh, Twitter. He says, "Who is a fit English genuine pace bowler on the county circuit?" The problem is fit. <laughs> we've got, we've got, we can throw ten names, but they're never fit. 
Um, Potts is probably the one that's standing out at this minute in time. A bit Durham. Pass will be fit relatively soon. I would imagine Stone and Archer are going to play in the T20 Blast, which starts at the end of May. Um, but fit-wise, that's why we're going back to Broad and Anderson. <laughs> that's why we're looking at Ollie Robinson, Craig Overton. These guys are the Jamie ones Overton. that are, are, are putting their hand up and taking the wickets. At this minute in time, the, the fit, fast bowler, if you don't look at someone like Matt Potts, who potentially could make the, the 13 or 14-man squad just to give him some experience but probably won't play, outside that, everybody else is, is injured. And we need to get... But the thing is, with they, these wickets, we'll start producing quicker bowlers because teams will have to go for something different to try and make some happen. Might not happen this year, but if we consistently play on good surfaces where runs are on the board in the next one, two, three years with winter investment, we'll get some quick bowlers from somewhere. Excellent stuff. Uh, Daniel King says, where is Dom Sibley in the current pecking order of England test openers? I think we've answered that one. So I'll throw this one to you, Nick, from Jez, uh, who says, who are the young or inexperienced bowlers impressing you so far? Ooh, um, <laughs> blimey. Uh, bowlers. <laughs> I forgot they existed <laughs> last month. Um, well, Matty Potts, I mean, as, as Harmony says, has been, has been great, hasn't he? Um, and seems to have come on a lot in Red Bull cricket in the last, uh, in the last, well, yeah, I want to say a year or so. I remember, what, I remember being down at Chelmsford last year and I don't think he played. I think it was Salisbury, Rushworth, uh, Rain, Cars in that side. So he's obviously come a long way, played a big part in that white ball. And so I had a very, had a very good white ball summer. Um, I know, I, know, I know he's not young, but Tom Helm has really impressed me when I've, um, and he is weirdly an experienced Red Bull as a Red Bull cricketer. Um, he's just not played very much for it. And he um, had a side problem last week, so didn't play down at Sussex, but he has really impressed me every time I've seen him bowl this uh, this season so far. And he's um, he's quick enough, uh, he's tall, he's worked a lot on the lengths he's been bowling over the winter. I think he's taken, I think he's doubled his number of career LBWs in first class cricket in the first month of the season, which probably tells all you need to know about how how, how full he was bowling before how, how full he's bowling now and the work he's done um, Jamie Overton who I didn't mention I guess is um, I don't know if he's young I don't know if he's young I mean he's the same age as Craig obviously but um, he's he's quick he was clocked at 90 when the speed comes the speed comes at the Oval a couple of weeks ago um, he, and he's having a very good season Jordan Clark at, at Surrey is, um, has been brilliant he's sort of the, the, un, the unsung guy and one of the unsung guys and what's obviously a very like international heavy Big name, heavy side, and um, he's been excellent. I think he's he's certainly their leading wicket taker. He's got he's got his runs as well. Um, so there there are twenty one wickets going yeah going well, and, and I, I said, obviously at a ground that's not always been particularly seamer friendly in recent years. Um, I'm trying to wrap my brains here. There are there are guys who've not necessarily got the rewards. No, so I think have been impressive. You don't, you've and, we'll go with that. Can I can I declare there? Yeah, you can stop. That's that's more than enough. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to the county preview. Match of the week. Okay, so eight games this week. Gloucestershire against Somerset, Kent versus Surrey, Warwickshire, Northampton, Yorkshire, Lancashire. Yorkshire, Lancashire. Yorkshire have been in a good position a couple of games now, haven't they? Um, I'll pick you out, George. Um, they just haven't been able to see see at home. I think they picked up an injury in the game before last. Otherwise, they, they fancied their chances. I think that was against Kent. Um... And again this week, didn't they? They just fell short again. They just couldn't force home, force home the uh, the victory. But Yorkshire Lancashire, that's always a game of the week, wouldn't you say, George? I would, and I think it's uh, yeah, it's a really attractive game for lots of reasons. Um, I, I do think Lancashire look pretty <coughs> ominously strong right now, so that's a proper test for Yorkshire. That Yorkshire batting lineup is is uh, as you say, it's um, formidable. But uh, yeah, they're struggling to bowl teams out, maybe. You know, it's a, a new test for Kabir Ali, the new bowling coach there, isn't it? Uh, see if they can find a way through sides. And, um, and, and you know, I know we counted him out earlier, but, it, you know, Don Bess, you can see a way he gets back in because he can bat and he's terrific in the field. So it is impossible that they, you know, Don Bess has a good game here and he forced himself into contention for that all-rounder who can help balance the side at eight. It's absolutely possible. But, but yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really mouth-watering game. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Division 2, Middlesex against Notts. That's a big game. Uh, Leicestershire against Sussex. Durham, Glamorgan. Um, if, if Durham don't get something out of that, then there's gonna, a gap's going to start 
inching out between or spreading out between Durham and the top two and three. And Derbyshire, who didn't play this weekend, uh, last weekend against uh, Worcestershire. What are your thoughts there, Harmy? Yeah, Durham needs to beat Gloucestershire. I would imagine there'll be a little bit more life in, in the surface at, um, at the Riverside um, because Durham know how, they know how to bat on it and they've got some serious, serious artillery when it comes to the batting. Um, they need to they need to be able to get 20 wickets and they've got to try and find somehow how to beat Glamorgan because you're right, I think if that goes down towards Wales, then I think then the promotion struggle will be will be on from Durham's point of view. Um, Broad bowling at Lords. George has questioned whether Broad plays in the first Test match. Well, he's going to bowl at Lords against Sam Robson, Mark Stoneman, Hanscom, Baton Unit, which is on a bit of on a bit of form. So the likes of Patterson White, Dan Patterson, as well as Stuart Broad, Luke Fletcher. That's not a bad attack going against against Middlesex um, up on the top. Um, but I am um, i can't wait for that Yorkshire-Lancashire game. I think that'll be a fantastic game of cricket. Anderson against Root, you know, you know top, top players throughout both sides. That should be, I'd, I'd like to have thought that might have been on TV because that's as, that, that'll be a high quality match. And if the pitch is to suit, I think it'll be a good game. Brilliant stuff. Well, uh, eight uh, games. Where's, where's everyone going to be, by the way? Nick, where are you going to be? What what five games are you uh, going to drop in, drop in <laughs> and split my, I'm going to split my time between Gloucester, Somerset and Middlesex, Knotts. Although I'm tempted. I'm tempted by Beckenham. So if you think you've seen good batting tracks yet, just wait until Beckenham opens up for its first championship game of the season. I think if you think if you polled all the county batters, you'd get more guys saying Beckenham was the favourite place to bat than, than anywhere else. And Nathan Gilchrist, what a, what a, what a place to break his run on Knotts. So, um, <laughs> well, I'll um, be there. No, I'm, are you there? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just down the road from me. Oh, by but the way, um, you haven't. What? Not one of you. If you're listening on the uh, on podcast or, or on TS2, you won't know what I'm talking about. But look, I'm not broadcasting from Talksport today, so I've got a pic. I put a picture up in my wall. My wife thought it was, I was putting up to stay. This is Mitchell Cricket <laughs> Club. I drew this when I was ten. You see. It was basically in a roundabout in South West London. So that's that way, but Beckenham's what's, that way. What's the guy with the lightsaber doing on the right as, as we're looking at it? Well, I was a massive Star Wars, Star Wars and cricket fan, which is why well, I was such an attractive, you know, option in the playground. <laughs> <laughs> that and supporting Fulham. Um, but yeah, I'll be at Beckenham. Might be seeing our old mate Jared Kimber there as well because he doesn't live too far from the ground. What about you, Harmy? Where are you going to be? Uh, I'll be at Embleton on Saturday with the Marty Bedleton second team. I actually had to play last Thursday night and I'm still recovering from it now. I feel it for 20 overs for Ashton second team. And then they asked me, they politely inquired if I could feel for 50 overs on the Saturday. And the answer was a, <laughs> Family a very firm a very firm and well thought about. No, I'm not interested in feeling for 50 overs. The answer wasn't quite so polite, was it? From, <laughs> hey, I'm still what, struggling from what Thursday. About, what about you, George? Well, Leeds is probably the most attractive, isn't it? And it would be nice, wouldn't it, if, if KP cut up some footage of Saqib and Anderson v Root and Milan and said, actually, do you know what? This county cricket is pretty damn good, isn't it? Yeah, and in fairness to KP, he did tweet out a picture of or a footage of Shaheen Afridi bowling to Pujar, I think. Yeah, so... Uh... Credit with credit to okay. I say, say again, his, his criticisms come from a good place. I honestly believe they do. He has always pushed the game forward. I just think he's wrong on this one. And he's always seen it his way and tried to do it his way as well. So yep. fair dues to him. And also been proven right <laughs> quite a lot. A lot. Time. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's go to one to watch. England player watch. OK, one to watch. Uh, my man didn't play again. Not the Derbyshire played, so Dustin Melson's out. Uh, you missed Mason Crane last week, George. We, fought, we filled in for you. He took a, a couple of wickets in both innings. Um, he, of course, has moved to Sussex on a month loan. One for 75 and not for 81. A little bit of a painful second innings, but uh, at least he's getting a little bit of... Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Well, that's all right. He's playing. That's the important yeah, thing. He's, he's, he's the barometer of English cricket in a way because if he's playing... The pitches must be conducive to that sort of bowling. So that's that's Absolutely. encouraging if nothing else. Uh, Ed Pollock, Nick, thirty-two and ten against Durham. Yeah, continuing to go, still going to run a ball. Um, no, no big scores this week. Bit, a big hunt for Jack Haynes though. First, first time of many, I suspect. I think Chris Rushworth tweeted similarly afterwards. 
um, having bowled against him for, for 90 overs. Um, he's good. He's, he's I was at his first list A100 last year. He's he's an excellent young cricketer. Um, and I hope that first one sort of opens the floodgates. And Matt Potts, you mentioned him. I mean, he's been your one to watch since the start of the uh, the campaign. And six for 62 in first innings, not for 85 in second. Yeah, he bowled well again, watching some of the footage. He's challenging you know, batsmen on the outside edge, on the inside edge, on off stump. Not really sure how quick uh, pace-wise he is. I think he's around about mid-80s. I don't think he's the express that you've got category of stone and wood and archer. But he's quick enough. Um, and with everybody, the the injuries that are going, he, if England pick 14-man squad for Lords, he might have an outside chance of being that 14th man to soak up what's happening because England might think they need, if they need a, a, a quick bowler, other than, and I missed him out earlier, um, Jamie Overton, they're probably the two quickest in the country at the minute and he's definitely performing, which is good. Good for Durham as well. Absolutely. Well, look, um, Nick, George, Harmy, thanks for your time. We'll all be back this time next week. Hope you've enjoyed the show, whether you're listening on podcasts or the radio or on YouTube, over on Harmy's YouTube channel or the Cricketer magazines. This is uh, following on County Cricketer, bringing you all of uh, the reaction and reflection to the county game. And we'll be back with you same time next week.